If I could be serious for a minute, I'd like to talk about ECW One Night Stand 2005. I got a couple of requests to do some to do some ECW pay-per-views, and I figure, why not start with ECW One Night Stand? It was only two shows, so I might as well knock those two shows out of the way. So, this was an absolute fantastic show. I loved this inaugural event right here. I kind of wish the second one was that good, but hey, what can you do, right? So, the very first match on One Night Stand is Lance Storm versus Lionheart Chris Jericho, not Y2J. He went old school for that night, and I love that because that was awesome. Lance Storm could still whoop that ass. Chris Jericho was still cool. Loved everything about that match. It was just spectacular. The crowd was into it. The, I love that crowd, man. New York City has a nice little crowd. I love that shit. When the crowd is into it, it makes the show that much more watchable and special. But Lance Storm wins thanks to uh, a little bit of an interference. And yeah, basically beat his best friend by cheating. Yeah. So, the next match was Tajiri versus Lil Guido, a.k.a. Nunzio in the WWE, versus Super Crazy. It's a three-way elimination match. This was awesome. This was fucking awesome. This was like watching an X Division match in TNA. Okay? This was so awesome. I loved every second of it. Tajiri still whooped that ass. I haven't seen Tajiri in a long time. So it was damn good to see Tajiri in the ECW pay-per-view. Because I forgot Tajiri was even part of ECW. So, hell yeah. Nunzio or Lil Guido, awesome. I love the fact that you actually see him wrestle. And not have him like WWE holding him back like he did, like did with this Nunzio character. The Lil Guido character is better. But they, they still have the FBI. But... They're uncut, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And super crazy. Fucking love super crazy, man. I used, man, I used to play with him all the time in the video games. Man, oh man, he still got it too, and that's awesome. Little Guido was eliminated first, of course. And uh, Tajiri was eliminated second. So Lil Super Crazy wins that match. And after a nice little tribute to some fallen ECW alumni. We got a little bit of an interference from Raw, I mean SmackDown and Raw, as they showed up to talk smack. And man, you may not like it, I don't like it either, but the writing was that much good, it was just that fucking good. I may not agree with most of what they say, but god damn, you can't tell me that was good promos cut right there. I know half of it is real between ECW and WWE, but still. The realer it gets, the better it gets. Edge and Matt Hardy knows that no more than more than anybody. So, and that was roughly around the same year too. So, yeah, and it was only two years away from what we will now know as SmackDown versus Raw. So the fact that SmackDown and Raw work together against ECW, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Next up, we got Psychosis versus Rey Mysterio. This is a extreme lucha match. But for some weird-ass reason, the moment Psychosis got in the ring, he took his mask off. The fuck? Why are you taking your mask off, fool? It's a lucha match. Even Rey Mysterio Jr. kept his mask on. You know? And everybody kept saying, put the mask back on, put the mask back on. Nope. What was the point, Psychosis? Or seacosis. What was the fucking point? Oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was a good match. Anyways, I love the action. I love the fact that these two can just jump around and do any type of crazy shit. It's just cool. And the fact that everything is legal because it's ECW, so you can literally do any fucking thing to you to them. That's nice. That's nice. But in the end, Rey Mysterio always wins. So yeah. Next up, we got Rhino versus Sabu. Interesting. The reason why I say it's interesting was this was like Rhino's final year, I think, in WWE before he ended up going to TNA. I, ironically enough, I thought it was uh, 
I think it was the Dudleys last year as well, before they went to TNA as well, and then Sabu would later join them, but maybe it's me. But yeah, it was a nice match. Love the hell out of this match. And, man, I can't wait to talk about the next match, but Sabu wins that match. Next up, finally, after all these years, we will get the dream match of Chris Benoit versus Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero, this would have been Eddie Guerrero's final year in WWE since he would die in that November. Wow, this would be 10 years since Eddie's been gone. Holy shit. And of course, he comes out in his heel character, even though everybody's cheering him. But, you know. Eddie Guerrero as a heel. Can I just say that was awesome? Okay? Not, not, the, not the first heel he was. I don't know about the WWE heel. Because he was better at that one. Because that was going on at the time between Rey Mysterio and him. So, kind of find it funny he didn't attack Mysterio. But, yeah. And Chris Benoit, man. I, Chris Benoit don't get a lot of credit nowadays. He they, they basically erased him. Hey, I understand why. But the man has a legacy. And I respect the legacy. I don't respect what he did. But I respect his legacy in the wrestling business, okay? And the fact that he's still irrelevant in the WWE Network says a lot. Because you can't really do nothing to hide that fact either. So, that's awesome. <laughs> you erased him, but you can't get rid of him off your video archives. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, that was a great match. Excuse me. Benoit and Guerrero had some fantastic chemistry. And who said they shouldn't? They came off of WCW together. They came to WC ECW together. So, of course, and WWE together. So they've been they've been together a long ass time, okay? Now, I think they said they faced each other 200 times, but this was the first time we've ever seen them wrestle in WWE. It was the first time I ever seen them wrestle at all. I never saw them wrestle in WCW. I just unless I just forgot. And I never seen ECW until one these one night stand pay-per-views. So, yeah. But in the end, Benoit wins. The next match, you have Mike Awesome versus Tanaka. I never heard of Tanaka, but Mike Awesome, I think he was in TNA. By the time I started watching TNA, I think he was there, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. But I remember Mike Awesome. And, uh, god damn, Mike Awesome was just taking it to Tanaka, man. I love the fact when you hit people in the chairs in ECW, there's no selling that bullshit. Okay? You get hit in the head of the chair once, and your ass is falling to the ground. Let me tell you something. To talk, uh, Mike Awesome hit the Tonka like four times and straight up in the head with a fucking steel chair. That man will not stay the fuck down. I'm like, fuck me. And the, you can hear the impact of it just going. You hear the, 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 the ripple going through that shit. I'm like, fuck. That's gotta hurt. He got hit three times. He barely fell to his knees for getting up again before Mike Awesome actually went up to the top turnbuckle and came down with the fucking steel chair to drop his ass. I'm like, God damn. Oh, ECW. No wonder ECW is the shit. They don't sell nothing. Okay? See, getting hit with a steel chair is like nothing in ECW. <laughs> Even the set can be said for Mike Awesome. He got hit like six times, I think, with chairs. I'm like, fuck me. You guys are just fucking each other up and it's just amazing shit man oh my god and that he takes to talk to two tables and then finally when he gets to that second table he decides to do some weird suicide dive into the, the fucking table I'm like what the fuck is that what the fuck was that that looks so nasty as Taz would say that looks nasty that's so nasty <laughs> man that was an awesome match though Mike no wonder he's called Mike Awesome he gets the win. Although, I love the, the, what was his name? The one that says, oh my god! That guy. He was drilling a hole in his ass. I think he took the money from WWE and left ECW at a, ha at a, a moment's notice. So, yeah, he was drilling him a new one, too. So, that's as that's, that's much attitude as I ever seen that man have. Because working with WWE... Yeah, he didn't, they, they kind of toned them down. NCW, that man had a mouth, and I fucking love that shit. 
Okay, WWE, he was kind of a pussy, but it wasn't his fault. Uh, anyway, the final match of the night and the standout of the fucking night. Dudley Boys versus Tommy Dreamer and Sandman. And then, and then, before the match even starts, here comes old fucking Stevie Richards coming down with his B.O.W. or Blue, Blue World Order. <laughs> and then some other people came down. I think it was Boss Mahoney and somebody else come down. We had this awesome little brawl going on here. Before they actually clear the fucking ring and we actually start the fucking match. Now, the whole pay-per-view, I'm like, uh, y'all missing a person. One person has not shown up this entire time, okay? But we will get to him because this match was fucking insanely awesome. These guys are best friends and they're fucking each other up with steel chairs, barbed wires. Motherfucker put a steel chair on time between Tommy Dreamer's crotch, okay? Okay? And then came down on it with the damn thing and fuck! Oh, the ball sack. Oh, that's got a ripple. Woo! Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Fuck! <laughs> oh my goodness. And then he takes a cheese. Dully Bubba Ray takes a fucking cheese grater and grates the top of fucking Dreamer's head. Ah! Oh. And then Dreamer comes back and gets it to him too. Ah! Oh. Fuck! Me! <laughs> that is awesome shit. A fucking cheese grater! Holy fuck! Oh my god. Man. And then Sandman comes in with the fucking Kindle stick. Tan, tan, tan. Not in the side, not in the back, in the straight up fucking head to everybody. Just knocking everybody in the fucking head. And you just hear it too. You just hear the. You hear it. Oh. Oh, my head. Getting hit in the head in the door hurts more than that. But a fucking Kindle stick. Oh my god. I don't even want to know. I don't even fucking want to know how bad that hurts. Oh my god. <laughs> Especially when fucking Sandman's hitting you with it. Jesus, <laughs> this was a fucking kick-ass brawl. I loved it. And at the end of the night, the Dudley Boys win what was probably their final year in WWE till up to going to team, becoming Team 3D and heading over to TNA. But that one person I said I was wishing they they would have since he was originally a part of ECW before he came to WWE. He shows up at the very end of that match, okay? And once that music hits, I'm like, there he is! And out comes Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, that's right, Steve Austin was part of ECW as well. I'm like, it's about fucking time, okay? You gonna whoop somebody ass? And then he calls out the WWE people down there, and we all have. And he calls out all the ECW people, and then he comes down and gets all the WWE people out there. He even gives them a countdown before he comes up there and whoops their ass. And Kurt Angle's up there too. That probably was his. Uh, it was his second to last year because he showed up in 2006 ECW as well. So the fact that Kurt Angle was still there and Austin called his ass out, you mealy mouth bastard, come on down here and take your ass whipping like a man. What? What? The baby come up there and whoop, smack all y'all in the head and the fucking face. That was the only time I actually heard Austin say goddamn until his podcast came up. I'm like, even the ECW, he can get away with a goddamn. Hell yes. That's the Austin I want to see in WWE, goddamn it. Woo! And then we had this big ass awesome brawl between ECW versus WWE. It was fucking sweet, but Austin didn't get in the ring and fight. He set that one out, damn it. <sighs> But ECW whooped that ass in WWE. Then they all had the bears and shit. Dougley's uh, escorted, uh, not escort. They picked his ass up. They picked up uh, Eric Bischoff and carried him all the way out to the back to the where the, the flatbed was and dropped his ass off and spit on him and then they came back in. <laughs> all in all, the very inaugural event of ECW One Night Stand. Oh, I forgot to mention that awesome promo by Rob Van Dam, who came out in the middle of it because. JBL would not get off the fucking mic. Speaking of JBL, I like when he called Rey Mysterio, I got a ticket, you little Mexican. <laughs> Before anybody hates me, I got a Mexican girlfriend, so calm down, calm down. Alright? Or a wife, as I should say. 
But JBL can just get away with anything, and you'll fucking you'll fucking laugh at him. He's so fucking stupid. But <laughs> but yeah, Rob Van Dam come out and drop that promo on JBL like it was nobody's business. Hell yeah, that actually led up to an improv two match. That actually led up into uh, Rhino versus Sabu actually, because Rhino came out and, and attacked uh, Rob Van Dam. Sabu comes out, comes out and saves his ass. So yeah, that was awesome. ECW One Night Stand 2005. We'll get an A. This was a damn good pay per view. If you have not seen ECW One Night Stand, you should. You should only watch the first two because after that, WWE would take the name over. Fuck you, WWE. Fuck you. Two years. That's why you would give it two fucking years. Really, really. Really? I have to have to quote the Miz on that one because that's bullshit. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think about ECW One Night Stand 2005 down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? I will see you guys in 2006. I still gotta finish 2006. I'm still at the I'm almost towards the end of it. But once I finish that, you will see my review. After all, it's a straight championship wrestling, baby. Formerly known as Eastern Championship Wrestling. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't always ex extreme championship wrestling. Just like WCW. So, yeah. See you guys then.